Howdy! In this video, we are talking about resources, capabilities, and competencies. Your company will have a competitive advantage if you can do things better than your competitors. Sounds simple, right? But how do you actually make it happen? We need to understand our resources and capabilities to build a strategy around them that can lead to your success. The things you do and that you're good at are called your capabilities. These are the valuable things that your company does in your work. And all of your capabilities come from resources. You put resources together in a way to accomplish valuable tasks. So resources are the source of your firm's capabilities. And your most important capabilities are the ones that you do best. They're the things that you do better than your competitors. These are the capabilities that we call competencies. Resources do not provide a competitive advantage on their own. You actually have to do something with your resources to accomplish your tasks. There are many different resources and many different types and categories of resources, but we're gonna talk about two very broad categories of resources, and these are tangible resources and intangible resources. And a simple explanation, though we'll get into a little bit more detail in just a minute, but a very simple explanation for this is that tangible resources are the things that you can touch or that you can measure, and intangible resources are the resources that you can't touch or measure, but that still provide a lot of value to your company. Some examples of valuable, tangible resources are equipment and buildings, maybe the land that your company is on, your trucks and your distribution centers. Also, we would include cash. I know you can't actually see it at the bank, but because most of our cash is now digital, but you can measure it. So cash counts as a tangible asset or a tangible resource. Intangible resources would include knowledge and skills. It would include training that your employees have received. It could also include organizational culture and routines or your brand name and your reputation. So when you think of intangible resources, think of people, relationships, innovation, and the reputation that help your business to succeed. You can't touch or count these intangible resources, but they do still provide you with a lot of value. So I wanna go through a few examples, three examples of different companies or really businesses, not specific named companies, and talk about some of the main tangible and intangible resources that they would have and along with some capabilities that they might have. The first example that we're gonna talk about is a dairy farmer. And so some of the tangible resources that a dairy farmer would have would be things like their cows, their land and their barns, the hay and feed that has to go to those cows. Also a milking machine. Um, you probably are aware that people don't actually milk by hand at large dairies. So that type of equipment is a very valuable, tangible resource. Intangible resources include things like knowledge of how much to feed, how to care for animals, or how to milk, how to use those machines. Also, relationships with buyers. You may remember that early on in COVID when things were just completely messed up, there were some dairy farmers that were dumping their milk because the buyers that they had had no one to sell to because all of the restaurants were shut down. The resource of the right relationships is valuable, but these are all intangible resources. So now, if we were to put these tangible and intangible resources together, a couple of capabilities that we might have are the ability to apply the knowledge to actually care for those cows. It's one thing to have someone who knows how to do something, and it's one thing to have the cows, but the ability to actually care for the cows, to milk them, to process or to prepare the milk, to ship away, these are all capabilities. Now let's talk about a bank. A bank has different intangible assets from a farmer. Uh, these might include things like the building, the computers, loans are tangible assets. These are short and long-term receivables. And of course, the cash that they have. Intangible assets or intangible resources, sorry, my undergrad in accounting is kind of coming out there saying the assets, um, but resources when we, when we talk in strategic management. So intangible resources, would include people, the culture of a company, of a bank, 
the knowledge that people have. What are the best loans to make? Or how do you properly structure a savings account to be beneficial to both the, the depositor and the bank? And also the brand of a bank, its reputation. Capabilities of a bank would include things like how to put the right loans together how to provide the actual customer service when people walk into the building and talk to the people, a teller, and they're able to make their transactions. These are capabilities, things that the bank actually does. Now, let's go ahead and talk about an auto manufacturer. Again, there are tangible resources and intangible resources. Some tangible resources would be the equipment and the manufacturing facilities that the manufacturer has. Certainly the car parts that they have in those facilities when they're putting things together. A dealer network would be a tangible resource. It's all of these auto lots, the, the sales lots and the dealers themselves would be a tangible resource. Intangible resources here would be things like engineering knowledge. How do you actually design a car that will work and that people will want to buy? Then we come to production knowledge. Now that it's been designed, you have to be, you have to have people who know how to actually execute those designs. And certainly the brand name. You know, when you search for vehicles or people you know are shopping for cars, there are some brands that they go to before others. And part of that is the valuable resource that comes with that brand. Now let's talk briefly about a couple of capabilities that the auto manufacturers have. Well, certainly the knowledge combined with the equipment allows them to actually produce the car. It doesn't do you any good to have the equipment if you don't have people who have the knowledge. You have to put those together to actually manufacture that vehicle. And then the ability to, to ship and to sell those vehicles is another capability. There are many capabilities. These are just a couple of them. You could look through all of the capabilities that any company has, and you'll see that some of them are critical to succeed in that industry. If we go back briefly to the auto manufacturer, some have done a better job and the vehicles that they produce have a better reputation. People know that they can trust that vehicle and therefore they get a higher price. The, the reputation that comes along with the quality engineering and production, take Toyota for example, has created a competitive advantage. So those capabilities bundled together end up creating a competence that allows Toyota to sell for more and to have a lot of people who want their vehicles. As a recap, resources are the source of your firm's capabilities, and the capabilities that set your firm apart that give you a competitive advantage are your competencies. So now I want you to think about your company. What are the valuable or most valuable resources or main resources that you have? What do you do with them? What are the capabilities that the company does with those resources? And if you can, what are the top one or two of those capabilities that really give you a competitive advantage, your competencies? That's it for this video. Take care.